Hello, hello, and welcome to Structures and Forces, video number six. And we're going to take a look at how do the parts or components of a structure make it more stable and more strong. And what are those parts? So today's program of studies outcomes, SLO 2.3, identify torsion, compression, shearing, and bending forces within a structure, and how they cause structures to fail. Analyze and design and identify properties of materials that are important to individual parts of the structure and infer how the stability of a model will be affected by changes in the distribution of mass within the structure and by changes in the design of its foundation. So let's get right into this today. Structural parts. Different structures depend on a variety of structural components. And these components make structures more uh, reliable to use and they are stronger. Now, these components include arches, columns, trusses, beams, and cantilevers. So let's start with an arch. An arch is a common shape found in bridges. They can support a large load because the force of the load is carried through the entire arch straight to the foundation or the base of the arch. This spreads out the load force. Okay, so here's a collection of arches in a structure. It looks down like a hallway. Okay. And when we look at an arch on the picture on the left there, the design of the weight, it's pushed through the top of the arch straight down to the columns or the imposts. Okay, the edges there, the first brick on the impost is called a voussoir. Not overly important to remember, but what is important to remember is the keystone. The keystone is the key stone in an arch. It holds up the rest of the arch and it helps to distribute that weight to the voussoir into the imposts. Now beams are very common components in a wide range of structures and a simple beam is a flat structure supported at each end. They are designed to resist bending and changing the shape of the beam will change its strength. Now what do I mean by that? Well, too much weight in the center of a simple beam will cause it to bend, creating a U-shape and eventually break. I-beams and box beams, which are called girders, provide more strength because they resist the bending in the middle due to weight. So if you change the shape of a beam just from a flat thing to an I shape or a box shape, it increases the strength of the beam. You can see that this structure, a very famous structure, largely depends on beams throughout the entire building. A truss is a framework of beams that are joined together. And trusses usually form in the shape of interlocking triangles. And you've probably seen this before. Take a look at this uh, roof that's being built in a home. You can see that there are many, many triangles placed throughout this structure because the truss largely depends on the triangle and makes it strong. So why use a triangle? I think I've said it a couple of times. Triangles are the strongest shape. The forces that act on a triangle are shared between the sides at the node or the attachment points. And triangles support compression and tension loads. Okay, So it's overall the strongest structure to use because it resists compression and tension and distributes the weight throughout the entire shape. Cantilevers are a beam that are only supported at one end. And these types of supports allow for overhanging structures. This is an amazing cantilever structure. Beautiful pool too, but you can see it is only supported on one end. A column is a solid structure that can stand by itself. Columns can be used to support beams and they work to resist compression. Now, different types of bridges are designed to support different loads using these components. When building a bridge, engineers and architects must consider A, what the bridge is crossing, and B, what kinds of loads will be on the bridge. So, the types of bridges are the same as the types of components. There's an arch bridge, a beam bridge, a truss bridge, a suspension bridge, which is uh, a, essentially a beam bridge supported at the top, and a cantilever bridge. So let's take a look at an arch bridge. We have three main components, a pile, the actual arch itself, and the deck. Okay, now, as you can see, this bridge resists compression. It compresses at the top of the arch, okay, 
and allows for the rest of the span to be held up because of the arch. Here's another famous arch bridge. It's called the Rialto Bridge in Venice. Now, beam bridges are fairly simple. It is simply a flat deck or a flat span supported by piles, and beam bridges resist compression and tension, or bending. A truss bridge compiles, uh, comprises of uh, trusses and a single deck. These trusses hold up the bridge deck and resist compression and tension because they are filled with triangles. The Calgary Peace Bridge in downtown Calgary is a supreme example of a truss bridge. Suspension bridges consist of towers with long cables running from tower to tower and to each cable is a stringer. These stringers are then holding up the bridge deck. There is multiple points of tension in a suspension bridge and the towers are withstanding compression. And a cantilever bridge is quite uh, different in the sense that it has an anchor arm. A cantilever arm which uh, extends outwards from a support and then what's called a suspended span and that usually connects two cantilever arms. So those are the types of components and bridge decks. Uh, you probably want to go back and take a look at these components and make sure that you understand where each of them uh, is found and how they work and the same thing with the types of bridges, how these bridges are designed and how they support uh, a load in basic terms. Okay, You don't need to know it in, in, in lots and lots of detail. Okay, that's all for today, and uh, we'll catch you next time.